Hello, everyone. Sorry for the technical difficulties. We had to do a little laptop swap there, a little exchange of uh, adapters and so forth. I'm Paul Carver with AT&T. Um, so hello, everyone. I'm uh, Thomas Morin from uh, Orange. And I'm uh, Tim Yonich from Ericsson. So we're going to talk to you about the uh, networking BGP VPN, which is a, a Neutron Stadium project. And the scheduling of the summit kind of didn't work in our favor. We are doing a sort of a more entry level version of this talk tomorrow at uh, 1215, I think. So if you don't know what MPLS is, don't know what BGP VPNs are, we aren't going to explain it now. We'll go into a little bit more depth on that. So this talk in the telecom track is assuming you know what all that is. So um, let's go to the next slide. So we have in the, in the NFV space uh, a little bit of a history here. When we started using Neutron a couple years ago, there was just the network. It was all about attaching VMs to the network. You had the public network. It could be the internet. It could be your internal network. But that was about it. So a couple years ago, uh, well, so a couple years ago, this project kicked off to introduce MPLS and, and BGP VPNs to Neutron. And we, uh, we wanted to do multi-tenancy. We wanted to do SDN controllers. We wanted to be able to extend Neutron networks into the wide area network. Uh, a lot of the, the telco applications are built with the use of, of VPNs as a sort of an intrinsic component. We use networks for signaling, networks for OANM, and we needed to be able to uh, attach virtual network functions to a variety of different VPNs. So let's go to the next slide. Uh, well, we can cover some of the, the early, uh, early work on this um, in terms of uh, Nati from NTT and Pedro from, from Contrail and some work from our friends at Orange. And there was a, a, sort of a, a communications difficulty with the, with the Neutron community just explaining what we were trying to do. And with the introduction of the, the Big Tent and the, the Neutron Stadium, that kind of opened the door to extending a, this capability into Neutron. Now, now let's go to the next slide, I think. Is it getting it? Oh, I think, did that skip one? Did I skip? I think so. There we go, okay. Yeah. No, right, okay. So the, the beginnings of this, um, this project were to extend Neutron to have a, a, a new API for dealing with BGP MPLS VPNs. And there were a number of uh, us interested, uh, AT&T, Orange, Ericsson, um, CloudWatt, and others. I think we had a fairly large gathering at the Vancouver summit of people who were very interested in BGP VPNs but didn't really know how we were going to achieve this. And so this, this sub-project came together, networking BGP VPN, and it was part of the Neutron Stadium, and introduced an API, a reference implementation, and a driver model. And go to the next slide, I think. Thank you. I'm trying to move it along quickly since we lost some time there. Yes, yes, but uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I it's done. So, um, sorry for the confusion about the technical details today. Um, so, looking at the project uh, today, so we did a, which is actually our uh, third release, we did a uh, Newton release pretty much in sync with the, the Newton release of uh, other uh, OpenStack projects. So, we have a, a consistent set of features, of base features. Uh, we have uh, an API that allows the definition of uh, layer 2 and layer 3 VPNs. Only layer 3 VPNs are actually supported today by um, uh, the drivers we have, but there is already work in progress to support uh, uh, layer 2 as well. Uh, we do have support for associating networks to BGP VPNs and routers to BGP VPN. This is something that I will explain uh, right after. Uh, we have support for the Neutron CLI. Um, we have today drivers for um, uh, different SDN controllers and one reference driver that's aimed at working with uh, ML2 Open vSwitch, the, the neutron reference drivers. So the, the supported SDN controllers are Open Daylight, Open Contrail, and New Edge Networks. And we have also uh, important additional features. In particular, we have full heat bindings uh, that have been contributed to the project. Uh, we have a, a Horizon GUI that allows to control the most important uh, parts of uh, um, what the 
API allows to do. And we also have a Tempest Suite covering the API test. So uh, what we do uh, in the networking BDP VPN project is that we, we add into Neutron uh, a service plugin um, that allows, um, uh, and I will explain the API operation that are possible, that allows uh, admin and users to do uh, uh, API calls to define BDP VPN interconnections. So when such API calls are done, um, then, uh, again, okay, click, then the driver will delegate the work to a backend. So a backend can be whether a Neutron plus a driver that tell, that, that's called Backtype, uh, or Open Daylight, or Open Control, or Nuage, to do the actual work required to set up the interconnection with the BGP VPN, which consists first in exchanging BGP VPN routes, so sending advertising routes to the outside, to BGP peers that are typically uh, uh, IP MPLS routers, and consuming the routes advertised by these routers. And on the other hand, configuring the data plane so that the MPLS traffic between the VMs and the VPNs can be carried. The data plane being typically the virtual switch or the router, depending how it's called. Okay. So, and again. So looking at the, the specific instanti instantiation of this architecture in the case of an SDN controller, uh, when an API call is done, the work is delegated to the SDN controller that will do, well, the actual operations will depend on the SDN controller. Click again. That will do the work uh, uh, it has to do to advertise the routes to the outside, consume the routes from the outside, the BGP VPN routes, and configure the virtual switches through, through uh, the southbound interface that, that it's using. And at this point, traffic can be exchanged between VMs and VPNs uh, as MPLS traffic. Click. So this is a setup that we have most typically when the driver used is a driver for an SDN controller. And the setup is slightly different. Click. Uh, when, we, uh, when we look at the, the, what we call the reference driver, because it's a, it's a reference driver that aimed at working with the neutron reference drivers, um, and that's light enough to run in the, in the, in the OpenStack uh, CI. So when this driver is used, well, the starting point is that we, the driver is meant to be used when the Open vSwitch ML2 mechanism driver is used. So when an API call is done, the same kind of uh, messages are used between Neutron server and the agent running on compute nodes, uh, so that the, the compute nodes have all the information on the BGP VPN interconnections. So the, the information on uh, these interconnections is passed via an, an extension of the Open vSwitch agent to the component actually having the implementation of BGP VPNs, which, which is called Backpipe BGP, which was made open source by Orange a few years ago. And this component will be in charge of exchanging the BGP VPN route and configuring the data plane. And here in this case, um, the data plane that is configured by the, 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 the BGP VPN component is an additional bridge that's added additionally to the existing bridge uh, already defined, already used, uh, by the neutron reference drivers. Next. So this is the underlying architecture to de deliver uh, a service. And it's interesting to see which uh, API uh, constructs we have introduced to allow uh, different entities to define what they need to define to create BGP VPN interconnections. So as you may know, uh, the BGP VPNs are uh, set up and created by the operator of the infrastructure, the operator that manages the shared network over which the BGP VPNs are constructed. So it's typically the OpenStack admin that will give access to a tenant to a specific BGP VPN. And to do this, the admin will create okay, um, a BGP VPN uh, object in the API that will have the technical details of this particular BGP VPN. And will give it to a specific project to use. Now, a, a user in this project, which has already uh, existing neutron resources, such as a network or router, can use additional objects to create the interconnections, the actual interconnection that he will um, uh, create on demand uh, between his networks or his routers and these BGP VPNs. So these objects to create interconnections are, are called the, the, the network and router associations. So these are all the new uh, API resources that, is, that are introduced by uh, networking BGP VPN. 
So th the key is really here to, uh, to see the distinction between what the admin can do and what the tenant can do. That's really the key part of this API, which is to uh, allow the tenants to uh, create on-demand connectivity based on an object that's still uh, controlled by the admin. Do you want to do this, or do right. you want me to do yeah. it for you? No, I'll, I'll do it. Okay. Uh, okay, so with that, we come to uh, what we are doing in this context in OPNV. Uh, as you have seen on the previous slides, uh, no matter which particular setup you choose, you need to integrate a couple of things which are not part of vanilla OpenStack. And that's basically what OPNV helps you with, because it is a what we call a midstream integration project, which uh, does mainly two things. It uh, does automatic installation of a vanilla OpenStack base system plus the components that you need in addition for a particular use case. And it provides with automated end-to-end -end testing of all these components that you pull together uh, in order to make sure that it uh, always works. Uh, because what we're basically dealing with is uh, multiple communities working on things in parallel, and uh, it's pretty obvious that occasionally things break. Uh, so BGP VPN, as you have seen, is such a use case. And uh, the nice thing about this is that it gives all the upstream communities additional visibility if what they do in, in their particular context breaks things in the system context. Uh, and there is one particular project within OPNFE which I have the honor to, to lead, and that's the SDN VPN project, which aims at integrating a complete stack for BGP VPNs. Uh, the focus is on scenarios where SDN controllers are used, as Thomas showed, but there is a, uh, a planning at least for having the, the neutron backpipe scenario as well. So, um, so how does that actually work? So, in um, the way this works in OPNV is that there is a couple of what we call baseline scenarios. And on top of those baseline scenarios, uh, we have uh, added the possibility to deploy the BGP VPN API extensions, the service plugin, and the heat extensions, activate the relevant features in Open Daylight in order to be able to run VPNs and do all the necessary stack configuration. And that has been integrated into the supported OPNV installers, Fuel and Apex. Uh, we have different scenario, dif different scenario flavors, HA and non-HA, and we can deploy this either on bare metal or we can deploy it as a nested setup in all, all on one host in the form of uh, VMs, which will then contain additional VMs. Uh, so a little bit more on what OPNV deployment scenarios are. Uh, a deployment scenario is essentially a specific stack configuration which you can automatically deploy with an OPNV installers, and that, can, that gets routinely automatically tested in OPNV CI. Uh, so there are a couple of baseline scenarios that the installer projects themselves are maintaining. There is one scenario which is called no SDN, which is essentially vanilla OpenStack plus OVS and Neutron Agent. And then there are two flavors for ODL, one where ODL only takes care of L2 networking and another one where it also takes care of L3 networking. And the SDN VPN scenario is derived from this L3 scenario where ODL takes care of everything. Um, so, and now we're getting into uh, demoing how that actually works. So how can you do that? It's actually a pretty simple way of getting a running system together. Uh, we're going to show it at the example of Fuel. If you're interested in doing the same with Apex, come see us and we can basically give you a rundown on that, on that, on that as well. But before I go into the actual demo, uh, there are a few things that I have Kind of done before, which are not going to be visible in the video, uh, which is we have already set up a VM which contains fuel. Uh, we have set up a number of additional VMs which will uh, mimic our compute nodes, uh, which have, are running and detected by fuel already, and we have done Linux bridges for the, uh, uh, for the underlay. And what we'll see in the demo is we will uh, run a quick check on the, on the fuel GUI to see if all the plugins that we need are in place. Uh, we will create an environment activate the right features within the environment, then we'll deploy it. And uh, that will, I will fast forward that, because that takes some time. So it's, uh, it gives you the opportunity to have some popcorn in between. And then I will give you a brief rundown on what, uh, what you can actually do with the system once it's deployed. So can we go that? OK. And just run it. So first thing I'll do is, uh, is it running? No. OK. So a couple of VMs are there, Fuel Master, one controller, two computes. 
Uh, we have a bunch of underlay networks already configured, uh, one default network and four additional networks. Um, there's uh, interfaces of the VMs associated to, to those networks. Uh, the configuration looks like that. We have like one admin network. Can you stop that for a second, please? Yes, I did. Um, so we have one admin network where basically the nodes are pixie booting from the fuel server. Uh, we have the, the public network, uh, and then we have like private networks for um, having the controllers be able to talk to the compute nodes and um, the compute nodes having their uh, something that is called internal transport, which is a feature by ODL. Uh, or a feature of ODL, and then there is a sort of the usual management network. Um, we can uh, continue. So, all right, next thing is we go to the GUI of Fuel, which is a web GUI that you can access through your browser. Um, we will um, first check the plugins. There's uh, three plugins that we need to pay attention to. The first of all, the BGP VPN plugin itself, which does the API extension deployment. Uh, and, and all the related things. We have a particular version of OpenV switch that we use. Uh, DPDK support is what we are looking for here. And then we have the Open Daylight plugin that uh, deploys the Open Daylight controller. And we, are, we have put functionality in there to activate, uh, to install it the way we need it. So next thing we do is we, do, we create an environment. We give it a meaningful name. And, uh, and we go next. and. We can uh, basically, we need to set a few options. This one can stay as it is. And then we need to select neutron with uh, VLAN segmentation. Oh, sorry, neutron with tunneling segmentation we need to um, put in. And then, all right, I think I originally thought I'd say more. This can stay as it is as well. Um, also, these settings, there, there's additional stuff that you can put in, but we don't need it for our deployment here. Uh, so now we can create the deployment or the environment. And now the next thing is that we need to um, get nodes into that environment. Uh, so, well, the first thing act that we do is actually to go to settings and activate the actual feature. So based on the fuel plugins that we saw originally, which are available on that fuel server, we now have to tell Fuel that it should actually deploy those plugins in addition to the base system. Uh, so we get uh, the vSwitch deployed. We get Open Daylight deployed. Uh, the BGP VPN extensions are grayed out as long as the BGP VPN plugin is not selected. Um, and once you save that, you can actually select those extensions as well. That's a little bit of a pitfall. Important to be aware of that uh, sometimes users get confused at this point. So now we save that. and. Um, Go back to our, um, our node configuration. And then now we have the, the three VMs that we can deploy to. Uh, and we will make one of them the controller node, meaning it's the base controller, the open stack controller, and also this one is going to host the open daylight controller. And now we have two nodes left, which we will make compute nodes. So we will give them the compute role and apply the changes. And now we're ready to go. Ah, sorry, I forgot about one step. We need to configure the networking. So um, we have our four uh, networks, and we need to associate the uh, interfaces of the VMs to those networks. Um, so we have on the compute nodes, well, this is now done for one compute node, and we need for the controller node, and we need to do it for the compute nodes as well. The uh, configuration there is slightly different. So we get the public network to the right uh, interface, the management network, and the private network. We apply that. And now we can run a check if the connectivity is the connectivity we need to have. And we see that there are, uh, and it's, it's important to pay attention to the, to the VLAN tags which are uh, given to those networks so that on the, under, on the other day, the, uh, the traffic gets actually properly separated from each other. And now we do the connectivity check. And it will, in this case, 
succeed. And now, now we can go to the deployment. So now all the software is actually pushed down to the nodes, both the controller and the compute nodes. So you see that now it says it's deploying. And if you go to the nodes, you can see actually a, a nice progress bar. This one is going to take a while. So if I can we fast forward a little bit? OK, now it's almost done. OK, and now we uh, can see that it, uh, the system that we have actually deployed now, uh, you can create BGP VPNs on it. Uh, you can go to the list of VPNs and, and see that. Uh, you can actually go to the list of networks, take a UUID of, out of that list, and associate it to one of the VPNs, as Thomas explained earlier. Um, so you basically just have to copy the ID, and then you uh, see that it has been associated to the VPN. And if you go to the, uh, to the VPN display uh, and, and see the list of associated networks, you'll find that that network is actually there now. Yeah, and I think that's it. So I think we have one last slide, right? You want yep. to take Just that one? Just a short conclusion. We are right on time, I think, nearly. So um, as we hope you understood, um, this is uh, about one API, one API to allow tenants to control uh, their interconnections. Uh, the interconnection between their resources on OpenStack and their BGP VPNs. So there are multiple use cases behind this. Uh, one of them is a kind of traditional uh, case of uh, a public cloud operator uh, that needs to interconnect business customers, having, uh, uh, well, being customers of uh, MPLS VPN offers. Uh, another one is InterDC, which can apply uh, typically uh, in distributed cloud context or at the edge of the cloud. And the third one, which is pretty important these days, is uh, the case of NFV multiple deployments, when you need to have uh, multiple pops hosting uh, NFV workloads being connected together. Um, so uh, kind of a takeaway is that this project has uh, progressed pretty well in the, in the past um, year and a half. Uh, it has multiple drivers for the, the well, key SDN controllers uh, having this ability to um, uh, interconnect with BGP VPNs, and it also has an implementation in Neutron. We have different interfaces to inter interact with this, the CLI, uh, Horizon UI, and HEAT bindings. And if we look further down uh, the road, uh, we will work uh, in the next releases uh, on completing the eVPN part of the API, and the bindings in drivers will happen uh, um, in parallel. Uh, we have remaining work to do to match the Neutron Stadium requirements, uh, in particular having more functional testing. Um, we want to work on evolutions of the API for finer grain control uh, of routing, static routes, preferences, and uh, route leaking, for instance. We will also consider supporting multiple drivers, uh, backends, simultaneously, typically to handle uh, transition and uh, transition scenarios between uh, different backends. Um, Something which is not in the project, which, but which is very relevant in the context of this project, is uh, something that is uh, uh, close to land, we hope, in Open vSwitch, which is a support of uh, the MPLS jury encapsulation, and next, we hope, MPLS over UDP in uh, Open vSwitch, which is a component used by many solutions. Um, and last point that we can mention is that we, we, we expect um, drivers and backends to evolve toward better feature parity. Today, we have some drivers that, support, uh, that don't support all the options, uh, all the alternatives provided by the API. And last point, um, which, was, uh, which is something that we want to highlight, is that uh, it's a project that really illustrates how uh, a project inside OpenStack, in particular in Neutron, can work hand-in-hand uh, -hand with a project in OpenFV. And here, we, we really uh, experienced the fact that OPNV was uh, um, uh, uh, providing lots of incentive to complete uh, the different building blocks uh, mm -hmm. and actually doing the work to actually uh, uh, validate and consolidate how they, they can be installed together and tested together. 
And uh, if you want, we are uh, available for questions. We have a few minutes. Uh, well, well, we'll do like if we have a few minutes for questions. Any questions? None? All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.